Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and today I'm taking a first impressions look at Boomerang X. A kind of throwback shooter with a very distinct art style and combat that is all focused around using your boomerang. Your mystical boomerang, which I guess has a bunch of different abilities, including one where you can teleport to the current location of the boomerang. So that makes it sound like there's going to be a lot of, you know, vertical aerial combat with you just teleporting around. But I'd actually originally assumed that this played more like Devil Daggers, in that you're in just one arena. But it turns out it is actually just a typical level-based game, and the arena shooter part refers to more of the, you know, Doom Eternal styles of arena where you have to kill everything before you can progress. And of course, it is published by Devolver Digital. I would have either assumed this was Devolver or New Blood Interactive. I think Devolver's been pretty good about supporting weirder indie games that wouldn't get publishers otherwise. Okay, looks like we were stranded by a sea monster on this island. Hmm, I can't throw this. Though it's interesting because I've seen a couple games this year that have released with this kind of art style. It's definitely a standout kind of look though. It's almost kind of a an alternate version of comic book art, even with the cross hatching on the textures. So we don't have a weapon right now. We are unarmed and left alone on this island, which I assume is full of monsters. Turn down the sensitivity just a tiny bit. If that's possible. Uh, down here, put it to just like 0.7. Because it doesn't feel like it's too crazy high, and I know I want to still have a lot of fluidity to the controls to aim. Alright. A village with a bunch of houses that look kind of like barrels turned on their sides. All of them abandoned. And here is the boomerang. Looks pretty plain right now. Not glowing or anything. Functions like a boomerang do. Makes a nice satisfying whirring sound as it goes through the air. I feel like this is definitely not the kind of thing you could just pick it up and you would know how to use it. Like, you remember that dumbass in Mad Max Road Warrior? who tries to catch the kid's bladed boomerang and it just fucking cuts his hand off. Alright, so you can hold it to charge up the spin. Oh yeah, that feels good to use. Like, it's just very <laughs> snappy. Okay. So it looks like even our default jump, you jump really far. And then you have like a... a stop? I'm not sure what the other part of it is. Alright. So here's our first arena. So I guess when it says required, it means only the marked enemies are ones you have to kill for that fight, but obviously you can kill everyone. I wanted to see if I could kill them on the way back. So we don't really have any kind of fancy abilities yet. I'm 
not really much control of what direction it goes in after it hits something. It seems to just kind of bounce around. So I was wondering if I could set up ricochet shots to take out multiple enemies at once. But it seems like not something I can really do on purpose yet. Alright. Recall boomerang. So I think this is where we can tell it to come back to us. Yeah, we can... So I'm guessing that, you throw it behind someone, you can pull it through them to get another kill. Alright, so you gotta do this quick. Kinda use it like this as a melee weapon. Do we, do we drink the blood? Do we touch the blood? We have a shield now. I'm gonna guess that will take one hit for us. Okay. I suppose this is just saying, hey, you're gonna have to fight a bunch of crawling things, so use your recall ability. The Composer's Garden. So yeah, it looks like you just travel from arena to arena, and that's what it means by arena shooter. But some of them look pretty big from these screenshots. We're still in kind of the tutorial zone right now. interesting because your actual movement speed is pretty slow, but that's because we don't have any mobility abilities yet. Just a big slow jump. I'm trying to line this up so that I can... Well, came a little too straight to me to pull it back. I do like that it at least gives you an indicator when an enemy's getting close, off to the side. That's me trying to use it as like a sword slash for really close range. Okay, this is a long way down. Huh. We seem to have hit a room on the way down that wasn't really there. This looks like it might give me an upgrade. Slingshot unlocked, okay. We play the instrument room and gain new abilities from the universe. So this is where we get our slingshot ability. It's just left click when it's already in the air, which is why left click is not the recall button. So yeah, I think if we can do this freely, there's no like cooldown. Oh, that explains with that. No, nope, never mind. I still don't know what this does. This hand. You do maintain the momentum of the boomerang and the direction, so if it's going backwards, you will teleport moving backwards. That's cool. Uh, I got stuck on the ledge. So it's not really like you don't teleport to it, you just get pulled towards it. You're not ephemeral. It's more of a grappling hook in this situation. What 
there's any secrets I should be looking for. Stop midair is hold spacebar. I gotta like throw it, teleport, and then yeah, that just causes you to drop. So I gotta do this without hitting the spikes. <laughs> Damn it. I don't think I want to throw it too hard, because otherwise it'll be all over the place. There we go. So... Like that. Which I'm guessing means there's going to be spikes in the arenas. <laughs> that I have to not dash into. Oops. I did that in the wrong order. So it'll take a little getting used to to get used to this movement speed, as it really does with any game that has distinct movement abilities. After taking damage, standing on a health platform will generate one shield. So yeah, between the jump and that teleport, you suddenly have a lot more mobility than I did a moment ago. <laughs> It's probably also going to give me more demanding enemies because of that. This appears to be an ant man. Or a man ant. And a big pile of bubbling goop. Don't want to touch that. Kanak, the exiled tyrant. Boss fight? I mean, these areas are pretty cool looking and definitely a lot different from each other. I don't really need to boost around yet. I just have to remember not to left click when I mean to recall, because sometimes I will do that without thinking about it. Some kind of spike ball jellyfish station thing. Hmm. That time it seemed like I dashed through the enemy after the boomerang had already passed them. I'm not sure if I take damage while I'm doing that or if I become a weapon. I guess we could find out. Okay, that, that didn't really... <laughs> that didn't really tell me anything. Got an achievement called Breakfast. I'm not sure what that means. Alright. So coming back, the Exiled Tyrant was just the arena and not like a boss or anything. <laughs> Didn't take any hits there. That's good. And where are we going now? This way. Well, it's not as brutal as I would expect from a game like this, but we are still early in. Touch the juice, win a shield. Down the pit we go. The tuning court. 
Alright, what song of upgrade do we have this time? Holding L shift while charging to slow time. Okay, so I'm gonna throw this, teleport, and then charge it again to slow time. like this, I can kind of just keep going up forever. <laughs> so that just lets you do precision shots now, without things getting too chaotic for you to handle. The Grudge Pit. Not mean to teleport there, see? What I mean about the recall. So that's how you're kind of meant to use that, I think. I don't know if there's a reason to kill the non-essential enemies, or if they're just there to avoid. let myself drift into an enemy, I think. And I almost landed on one that spawned. Okay, so that guy's got a weak point on his back. That's where I need to slow time when I go behind him. Ground enemies first. Grab this health, I guess. You have to kind of just stand there for a minute, <laughs> so it's not easy to grab that, and the fight's still going. Crap. Nope. It's a little bit off. guy's actually spitting out more of these. That's why there's so many of them. So, teleport past him. So yeah, I'm liking these abilities so far. kind of makes up for the fact that these arenas are sort of small, because you're using the full vertical space of the arena. Nah, I can't get him, he was turned the other way. <laughs> was a fun one now that we're adding a little bit of difficulty into it. So you probably won't go too far into this because it is, I think, a very short game. It's like maybe four hours? Just based on the reviews. 
Yeah, this looks like a bit of a bigger one. The Shrine of Caspide. Are you not hostile then? Mr. Centipede? Oh, I guess he's he's a millipede. Centipedes don't have rounded shells like that. Ah, what are you? You aren't one of the Yoran Mantids. Where have you dropped in from? I'm so sorry. I've, I've been all alone on this island ever since those things wiped out the Yoran. My name is Taipan. I am terrible at singing. Better at cooking. Haha. <laughs> was that just his icebreaker? <laughs> Hi, I'm Taipan. I'm terrible at singing, but better at cooking. Wink, wink. Is that one of the manted weapons? Are you using it to fight those monsters? Oh, of all the terrible, terrible ideas I've heard and had myself, I can definitely say that is a bad idea. Look, if you're intent on fighting, I've got to warn you there's something down there. It reminds me of the river leviathans that terrorized my village back home. I only caught little glimpses, but I think all these dark beasts come from it. If you do get through, I'll try and meet up with you somewhere ahead. I'm good at scurrying between crevices and avoiding these ghouls. Alright, Taipan. You take care. <laughs> oh, this shrine is one of the last quiet spots on the island. It also has the best tasting slime. Try some. It's over there by those bamboo shoots. The Yoran told me that Big Mantid with the antlers over there is Caspide, someone who was so good at playing music it made magic happen. Or something like that. Imagine that. I make a pretty good scatter moss roast, but it won't make you levitate. Legend goes Caspide submerge themselves in water, played a perfectly tuned set of strings, and then... Uh, ascended? Can't believe myself. I'm the last bastion of knowledge on Yoran culture, and I can barely remember their legends. But I do remember all those recipes they taught me. Figures. Tapan is slurping slime. Alright, well, enjoy your slime, buddy. You've probably earned it. So yeah, I guess this island was inhabited by races of bug people. Based on what we've seen. They don't really look like mantids, though. They do look more... Well, the eyes are kind of mantid-like, but... I don't know. They do have also the... Okay, yeah, I guess that's a mantid. But I'm pretty sure the one we saw earlier was not. Pretty sure that was an ant. An antid. Alright, let's do one more arena, and I think we'll call it there, because I don't want to give away too much. But I'm having fun with this. This is actually really cool, and I'm glad that I decided to check it out after all. Because I wasn't sure I was going to. Alright, give me the strings. Let's play a little magic. Magic the tuning. Scatter shot. After killing two enemies with one throw, you can hit E. Now I wonder, do I get to bank that, or do I have to... Okay, yeah. Looks like I can hold on to it, I don't have to immediately use it. Because that would require some precision. And it's like a little shotgun blast that comes out of your hand. Alright, so now it actually... Oh, shit. It actually is worth lining up those multi-kill shots that I was trying to do earlier. Yeah, it seems like those corridors aren't actually there because we just ended up back in the room we were in. Hmm. I'll accept that this is a mantid as well. I just thought he was more of an ant before. Alright. Valley of the First Nymphs. Which is what baby mantises are called. Mantis nymphs. Ooh. Okay, so they're short and the grass does not <laughs> let them stand out, which is what these little platforms are for. There we go. 
a good group clearer. I'm not sure if they can even get up here, though. Okay, that thing has hitboxes on the sides. Wow, that has a big radius. <laughs> like, it doesn't really look like it does from the effect, but yeah. Yep, that was me trying to recall and hitting left click instead. So the spiders in this area are pretty much just an annoyance to distract you from the other stuff if you're careless. Oops, did not mean to dash into you. Gotta take those things out first, because they they suck. I don't think one's actually hit me yet, but I have to keep kind of emergency dashing out of the way. Oh, I thought that was a lined up shot, come on. Yeah, these things don't have great accuracy. <laughs> Waited a little too long to jump out of the way. Okay. <laughs> I'm not flinging my boomerang up enough, so I just was like pulling myself through the crowd there. If you charge it up, it kind of, you know, it has more forward than upward momentum. I think that's actually a little wasteful because I can't get high enough to get a good scatter shot on them. Because when it's in front of you, it hits a big old cone. I'm gonna wait till they're all nice and bunched up. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay, I killed him with a rebound. There we go. That was like 10 to 20 of them. In one big hit. So you can hit those from the front. You just have to be a little precise. I think I'm just glancing off of them. Okay, I got two blasts, so if I can get above everybody... take out a big crowd of them. Gotta be careful when going through the middle, though, because there's a lot of these guys just floating around like mines, basically. <laughs> it 
It is satisfying to dash behind them and then go slow-mo like that. Like, I'm sure that'll get more precise as you get through the game with enemies that need, like, a very specific angle to hit them. Also, you seem to be able to use the slow-mo pretty judiciously. It regenerates very quickly, but then again, you don't have a lot. You have, like, maybe three seconds of it in one go. Okay. Second last one. Cleared out a big chunk of the arena right there. Ah, thought I could get a two there. Them, and then I think there's three more. I actually don't know if I can hold more than two charges of this at once. Shit. They do turn to cover their weak point, so you can't just indefinitely walk up behind them. All right, that was the Valley of the First Nymphs. So yeah, I'm curious about what level of complexity it will get to by the end with abilities and enemy types, but so far I'm enjoying the way it ramps up. I feel like there's got to be some secrets around, though, in these areas where you can, you know, kind of look around. Oh yeah, this looks like a big-ass arena. There's a bunch of health down there. So, I guess that answers my question about the arena sizes. Alright, well, I think I'm going to wrap up, but maybe we'll, we'll give this arena a try as we, you know, finish up here. <laughs> I'm not going to do the whole thing. But yeah, this is Boomerang X, and I'm going to probably play through this whole thing in the next day or two. But I'm glad that I got around to checking it out and sharing it, because this is a game that is very much my kind of jam. You know, I like my retro throwback shooters, but this is not really that so much as new ideas with kind of an old gameplay flavor. Or perhaps not gameplay flavor, but, you know, kind of design flavor. Because these kind of arena shooters were not that uncommon in the earlier 3D era of FPS games. I mean, I guess stuff like Serious Sam and Painkiller would fall into this category as well, because they do have you in areas that you can't leave until you kill everything. But yeah, thanks for joining me for this First Impressions look at Boomerang X. Hopefully some folks will be into this as well and check it out. But regardless, I'll see you folks next time. Take care, y'all.